Thank you all for coming uh, to our presentation. Um, we are group number 15. Uh, my name is Kate, and this is my group member, Sahaj. And we'll be presenting our work on graphene oxide-coated silver yarns for conductive textile applications. All right, so we've chosen to focus on the wearable technology industry, which in 2018 is extremely profitable. Uh, the industry is said to be worth over $22 billion by 2022. Um, so a lot of companies in this field are looking to move towards actually embedding electronics into the fabrics themselves rather than having external consoles similar to your smartwatch or Fitbit or anything like that. Uh, now, I'll, as novel of an idea as this may seem, uh, it does present several challenges to material scientists and engineers. So, um, one of the problems with conductive yarn is that it's not well characterized. So, we don't know a ton about uh, quantitative data about their degradation and effects uh, due to the environment over time. Uh, so in terms of their macro structure and morphology, again, uh, not a lot of research has been done in this area. And of course, due to the harsh life cycle that you know everyone puts their clothing through, um, conductive yarns do degrade over time. And one of the main uh, ways that they do that is through oxidation of silver. So in the same way that your silverware would tarnish at home, the same, uh, same concept applies here to our silver yarns. And uh, over time, this ultimately does affect their uh, electrical performance in these applications. So our objective with this project was to ultimately improve the long-term performance of conductive yarns, uh, specifically in our case, silver yarns, um, for applications in wearable technology. So our key design challenge in doing so was to create an effective and scalable, simple coating process to prevent the oxidation of silver conductive yarns. So our final uh, design solution was using graphene oxide coatings to protect the silver yarn from tarnishing, essentially. And we did this using a layer by layer de uh, deposition process. So what we mean by layer by layer is that essentially you want to start with your surface having some kind of charge and you essentially deposit oppositely charged materials back and forth to build this kind of, uh, these layers up. Now our challenge uh, with this project was that our primary layer, which is the silver, has no charge on it. So we had to think about what kind of polymer we're going to choose to be that first layer to adhere onto the um, silver surface. And for that we, we uh, decided on polyethylene amine. And the reason we chose this polymer is that it is a uh, polymer that is highly branched with um, lots of amine groups, which act as a positive center for our graphene oxide to uh, be uh, uh, attracted to. And we found lots of papers and stuff that showed that we could, in fact, like physically adsorb it onto a metal, which was very promising for us, because that was the part we worried about the most. So when you're looking at this, uh, this, uh, L, this LBL process, you just need to control the pH, how much time you're spending in, in the solution, uh, as well as the uh, um, concentrations of the different materials. So, uh, like I said, uh, PEI, you can see a small diagram over there. It's got a lot of uh, amine groups, primary and secondary amine groups. So by keeping our solution at a very low pH, we can ensure those amine groups are positive and that when the graphene oxide is introduced as well, and which is slightly negative, we can have these layers building up. And our process involved first uh, polishing our yarns. So the yarns could already have some kind of uh, tarnish on them, so we polished them first. And then we went back and forth, starting with a PEI solution, and we would soak it in PEI and then in graphene oxide, going back and forth with a five minute uh, rinse and dry uh, in a step uh, in, in between. So overall, to make four layers, where each layer is uh, one layer of PEI and one layer of graphene oxide, that took about three and a half hours. Um, and this is, uh, it's important to note that this time scale is, is uh, in independent of the volume of yarn that you're coating. If you wanted to coat more yarn, you would just need a bigger beaker, essentially, a bigger vat to just soak more yarn in, but the coating time would be like, r relatively the same. And to give you a sense of the kind of uh, concentration we're looking at, the PI was at a concentration of 4 milligram per milliliter, and the graphene oxide was, in, uh, was at 2 milligram per milliliter. So moving on to the characterization and performance measurements of our material. So it's important to note that our design is something that is not an end consumer product. So it's important to know that our material is something that a wearable tech manufacturer, for example, would purchase and then use their material in whatever applications they have. So the possibilities for applications are endless, uh, which is why in all of our performance measurements, we're always comparing to the base case. So we're comparing it to the silver yarns that are currently used in industry uh, against our coated yarns and to see how they compare with uh, what is currently being used. So to do this, uh, the first thing we did was to 
determine whether or not our coding process was effective and whether or not uh, the PEI and graphene actually did exist in our coding. So to do that, we performed some FTIR measurements. Um, we also performed SEM just to observe the morphology uh, and, uh, and the coding of the uncoated and uh, as well as our coated yarns in two different pHs. And finally, we took resistance measurements uh, over time to record the change, again, oxidation being one of the biggest hurdles for uh, silver conductive yarns, to compare over time how the resistance changed uh, for the silver yarns and our coated samples as well. And uh, heat was also used to accelerate this process to simulate um, a much longer oxidation time versus like seven days or something. Okay, so here's our uh, FGR results. Um, I mean, I don't know if normally you'd put FGI results in a presentation like this, but it's really important for us because, like I said, that very first layer of coding of the PEI is a purely physical process, so relying on that PEI just eventually sticking to the silver. And uh, so that was our biggest worry with our project, because we thought that once the PEI is on there, those po that positive and negative interaction is a pretty safe bet once the PEI is on there from the first place. So the uh, orange curve is just a blank KBR pellet, and the blue curve is the KBR powder mixed with our coating powder after we like scraped it off uh, yarn. So uh, the key peaks are the, uh, that primary uh, amine group peak at around 3,300 and the uh, CC ring peak at around, uh, I think it's 1,600 there. And the reason that uh, the amine peak is really important because it confirms that a uh, very amine-rich compound is in our powder, which is our PEI. So we can confirm that our PEI did make it onto the silver surface of the yarn. Um, from there, it's a safe bet to assume that our graphene oxide also made it on because of that plus or minus charge interaction. But we also have the peak for the carbon-carbon in ring, so we can further confirm with FTR that it's, we're highly confident that our, both the graphene oxide and the PEI both made it onto the surface of the yarn. So uh, like Kate said, we placed uh, control yarns and our coated yarns on a uh, hot plate and left it overnight for uh, about, about a week. And we measured resistance at uh, rates. The big gap in the middle is because on the weekends, we're not allowed into the lab, so we can't get measurements then. So uh, the orange, the orange uh, point is the uncoated yarns. And you can see it's slightly trending upwards. But also, you can see that the, that the variance in the yarn measurement is also increasing. This is across approximately, I think, five samples or so. Uh, and each sample is measured at different parts on the yarn as well, because even on the same length of yarn, the resistance can be different, because like Kate said, these, the way these silver yarns are made is not very consistent, and the coatings aren't necessarily very like, clear and well uh, um, char characterized. So with our coated yarns there in uh, gray and blue, not only is the resistance staying relatively the same, but the variance in the data is also much, much smaller. So not only can we conclude that our coating is working well to prevent this uh, tarnishing of the silver yarn, but also we can kind of control the behavior of the yarn across the whole yarn by giving it this um, uniform coating, which was our primary design challenge. And it, this data suggests that we did meet that challenge by preventing the, uh, the uh, oxidation of the yarn. Okay, and finally, we have some, um, some SCM images of our coating. So the top row is coated at pH 3. And the second is coded at pH 5. And finally, the bottom row is the uncoded sample. So in our, in our lower pH sample, um, you can see the, the, less, the, the smaller amount of contrast in those photos um, leads us to believe that the graphene oxide coating is present due to its, uh, its low conductivity. Uh, so under SEM, the low contrast does show us that the coating isn't as conductive as, let's say, the non-coated uh, samples, where you can see the contrast uh, is quite obvious. Um, so naturally, the lower our pH goes in our solution, the more protonated groups we have, so the more our coating is adhering to the surface of the yarns. And uh, so over time, as we we linearized our resistance change data as shown in the previous slide. Um, it was concluded that our coated yarns actually oxidized 10 times slower than the silver yarns that are used currently in industry. So um, again, our, being our primary design challenge, uh, we were really happy with these, with these oxidation results. Cool. Um, so, like, so our coating's primary goal, again, is to prevent this um, tarnishing from happening. And the time scale of this project, of this kind of uh, coating, is on the time scale of you know, weeks or months as this yarn sits on a shelf and is slowly uh, oxidized. So for a prototype design, it wouldn't really make sense for us to have a DMM on the table and someone sits there for three days and watches a resistance number not change. So what we did is we took our uh, silver yarns and we made these little buttons. We made four buttons, little um, squares with them. And then we took some of those buttons and we coated them using our, uh, our uh, 
coating process. Now, the reason we couldn't take coated yarns and knit them is because we just didn't have enough time to push that much volume through our coating process. But coating the, like, uh, the square of yarn afterwards should be relatively similar to coating like, uh, the yarns first and then sewing them into a, 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 some kind of uh, button. So basically, we use these buttons as a controller for a game, and you can come out to our uh, symposium floor and play the game. And our basic idea was that if a user can't tell the difference between the button's performance, if they all perform the same, then we can conclude that our uh, coding is not uh, going to affect the performance of the yarn for this specific application. In this case, they're being used as a, ca as a capacitive touch uh, sensor. So uh, in conclusion, uh, our, design, we, our design showed that you can use this, uh, L, this um, L, 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 LBL process with PEI and graphene oxide to coat these um, silver yarns. And it will also reduce the onset of the tarnishing of these uh, silver yarns as well. Uh, and also, based on our prototype design and uh, using them in an actual application, our coating doesn't affect the actual performance of the yarn in the application which we, which we looked at. Also, our uh, cost analysis indicated that the cost of coating the yarn, because it's only like four layers of coating, you're using a very small amount of material, and we're only increasing the cost of the bulk yarn by about half a percent. So that's right within our goals for in terms of how much it should cost to coat the, this, that, 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 that much yarn. So naturally, uh, silver conductive yarns have a lot of parameters, a lot of different properties that could be investigated. So although our process, uh, our project did focus a lot on the oxidation of the yarns, other, um, other properties of the yarns could be investigated as well in the future if this design were to be uh, pursued, such as the physical stability uh, of the yarns under different wear tests, different wash tests. Wash tests and abrasion tests were performed, but um, the, the, the results would definitely, are, are definitely a little bit more inconclusive. More testing would definitely have to be done. Um, also, a more inert uh, alternative to PEI should most likely be uh, investigated if this were to be used in a consumer product uh, due to the possibility of it being dangerous to aquatic life. If, uh, for example, our yarn were to go through a washing machine and make it into the wastewater system, uh, it could potentially be dangerous. So an alternative to that should be investigated if this, again, were to be implemented into a consumer product. And finally, just a more in-depth um, investigation into the coating process and optimizing our parameters, um, those being the concentrations of the solutions, the layer deposition time, uh, just for efficiency purposes um, as we scale up our, uh, our process. All right, so that's everything we have for you today. Um, we would like to thank our project consultant, Michael Pope, for his uh, guidance, and we also our industry partner, Mayant, for supplying us uh, with some materials for this project. Uh, we'd also like to thank the undergraduate lab coordinators for allowing us to use lab space, and our two other group members, uh, Kristen and Jonathan. So uh, we'd like to open the floor to any questions now. Thank you.